Folks masked up for the 32nd annual Tota Festival and Indian Market at the Civic Center in Farmington over the Labor Day weekend. The usual three-day event was scaled back to two because of the continuing pandemic. But with 54 artist booths, the Navajo Rug Auction, performances of native dancers and comedians, there was plenty of lively attractions to satisfy. You're watching the Local News Network, brought to you by Sunray Park and Casino and CMIT Solutions. I'm Wendy Graham Settle. One of the festival's highlights is the Navajo Rug Auction held every year. Representatives from trading pros throughout the region submit rugs, as do individual weavers. They're all, from all over, uh, all different kinds of styles. We have burnt waters, we have Tisnaspas, we have two gray hills. We cover kind of all the main uh, historic styles and even some that don't fit a category. And we have rugs that are from uh, weavers as young as seven up to weavers that are 90. A contest for the official commemorative poster of the festival is a way the Tota Foundation recognizes and rewards talented painters. This year's winner, Beverly Blacksheep, entitled her painting Golden Days and Silver Linings. And it's a um, painting I did uh, in response to the severe drought that we have out in the reservation, especially in the central part of Arizona, uh, near Chinle, that's where I'm from. And um, as a child, I remember how the grass used to grow up to your knees. And so that this new, uh, the monsoons finally showed up and the grass is finally growing. But I don't know if we'll ever see the grass grow as high as your knees again. But I'm hoping and I'm thinking that someday we'll, things will get better. Not only for that, but also for the world, you know, with all the things that are happening right now with the pandemic. So I'm hoping that this kind of makes people feel good. Sculptor Tim Washburn works with stone and considers the festival an appreciated break from the usual grind. Yeah, these are uh, original sculptures here. I've got, uh, like I said, one piece here I'm working on here. This is a black uh, Belgian marble. And we get these stones from uh, uh, all over the world. And uh, this is a small piece I'm working on right now. Yeah, two horses. And I have a lot of sanding that I got to do on this piece. <laughs> And Some of the artwork on display shifts from traditional styles to contemporary, but paintings like Venea Yatsi still tell a long-established narrative. It's centered around women in the Southwest because my heritage is Navajo and Hopi, so I depict mostly uh, Navajo women and then Hopi women in their cultural adornment. So that includes their garments, their hairstyle, and their jewelry. And what I do is um, I parallel that against uh, landscapes because um, in the Navajo culture, the land is referred to as female. And so a lot of times I'll put, you know, in my images, the women figure and then, you know, water and land and then the sky. So I feel like they complement each other. In the midst of the continuing pandemic, multimedia artist Ronald Chi says native art is an imperative. You know, the art, art is essential, art is alive, and the native indigenous art is critical to the culture and also to the life, uh, livelihood of the artists. And so it's good to be out and, uh, and see everybody. Considered collector's items, the 2021 TOTA Festival poster, along with the ones from prior years, can be purchased for $25 at the Farmington Museum's gift shop. For more information, go to totafestival.org. Thanks for watching this edition of the Local News Network. I'm Wendy Graham Settle.